Um, two main requirements for the class. There's obviously going to be an exam at the end. Um, and throughout the class, I hope you guys are going to be developing research projects. You need to develop research projects. You can develop this in groups. And the research project should not be very hard. I will be able to help you develop this either in class or outside of class. And with the research, I encourage you, because of my experience and what I think will have the most job opportunities and use for you, I think you should focus on, of course, marketing, but what part of marketing? Marketing for management of information. Management of information systems, management of online education, management of uh, online information for training people, uh, management of social media analytics. And I will repeat, the management of social media analytics is super, super important for marketing. If you understand how to use the social media analytics, I'm very confident you'll have five times more job opportunities and business potential than people that don't know it. So I suggest, number one, the first topic, you think about working in a group for researching something about marketing and management of uh, information. The second topic is research projects for green energy, climate change, things like that. The uh, environment. The third topic is going to be a topic that we can easily talk about also with other partner universities in Canada or Hong Kong or Kenya. We can open our class and have Skype video conversations with people from around the world. And that third topic is going to be about corporate social responsibility. Rich people, poor people divide. The wealth inequality gap. How organizations can give back. Um, so in addition to developing one research project, we um, will learn how to work efficiently the research topic number three with the corporate social responsibility. Many companies make lots of money. Some of the world's biggest companies make trillions of dollars. And to appear nice or to be nice, they give the money back. Uh, sometimes they give it back in many different ways. One way is they give the money back for grants. And a lot of people don't know about grants. So I'm introducing you guys to this opportunity where you can research, do your class work, but if you take a little bit more energy and find a grant, then you might be able to do your class work and get paid to do it at the same time. And use that pay to help your dream company develop in some way. So we should develop a research paper and some sort of a grant application and of course, we need to learn how to present the information by video or YouTube video, something like that. So we talked about this last class. The uh, next topic that I will talk about, I showed you this file and it's called How to Write um, and it introduces SSCI and Impact Factor. Um, I suggest you understand at least the yellow parts of this. It's talking about there's, especially with uh, some people that don't understand marketing, people lie, people gossip, people chit chat about things they don't really know. A lot. So if you want to be very useful to the world, if you want to be very uh, powerful or influential, you must make sure your information is good, is accurate. Make sure you use smart information. So I introduced SSCI. That is the association of top business journals. And their methods, their information should be respected. So if you want, you can learn about it if you don't know about it here. This file you can get from me. I have put in the Facebook class group. It's again called How to Write. And it talks about SSCI and Impact Factor. Um, it also talks about here, basically it's only two pages are the main details, just two pages, but there are 22 pages. There's extra information to teach anything else. 
So the first two pages is what we look at. And this is introducing the bottom of the second page shows how to make a research paper. You should have an abstract. You should have some keywords. You should have uh, an introduction talking about why is your topic important. For example, why do you think management of information with marketing is very important? And we will talk about that in this class later. Then you need to show you are an expert. How can you show you are an expert? Show other people that were an expert and tell the world what they said. If you know what experts said, what the SSCI article said, you look good, even if you don't understand. <laughs> so give a background literature comment and then you talk about the methods. How are you going to do your research? If you're going to do qualitative and just interview people or observe people, or you can do quantitative and survey people and uh, do the statistics. What is the average number of people? What is the change? And then you analyze the results. You have your discussion and references. Make sure you know how to reference properly. At the top, this says you do an exam and the research paper. Then there's uh, group work. You can work in groups to do your research paper. I'm not worried about the size of the group. That's up to you. The, uh, the point is to learn to work with other people. And when you start developing your research project, maybe your English uh, isn't very good, like I'm sure you guys. Uh, if you would like some help, I have started to plan for you guys to take your research pages, your projects, and you can give it to somebody in the class, a group of people, a group of students in Canada. Or you can give it to a group of students in Hong Kong. Or you can give your information to a group of students in Kenya. And they can evaluate it. And you might be able to evaluate their comments on the same topic. And we can introduce your projects through video online. And the people in Hong Kong or Kenya or Canada can listen to your ideas and you can hear their ideas. So they can help you get ideas for your project. And we will do that soon after the break. As an introduction, you should show me what do you propose to research in our next class in two weeks and uh, propose what grant you hope to use in two weeks. And when you're proposing that to everyone, hopefully you have a couple of PPT slides just to summarize everything. Don't go serious with the research, just know the basics. And you can present that and people in other countries can listen. And they can maybe copy you or work together and collaborate with you guys. Um, the things that we will be talking about that they want to talk about the most is the corporate social responsibility, like wealth inequality. And they're interested in environmental projects like green energy, climate change, etc. Most of them are uh, interested in also taking our information that you make, getting a grant so you get paid to develop, you get paid to do your work. Unfortunately, I don't get paid, that sucks. But you guys get paid for a one-year project if you want, or a two-year project if you want, or a five-year project if you want. The grant is your idea, so you design it. I just check it and send some of the things if I want to upgrade it. Um, once you're finished, you will write your, your paper. It should be finished maybe by midterm. That means we have half of the term to upgrade it. Um, and once it's finished, it should be very good and we can publish it in a book with the Canadians and people in Hong Kong and the people in Kenya. And maybe one chapter of the book will be the corporate culture. One chapter will be the intro to marketing, the idea of branding or consumer patterning, big data issues. Another chapter will be the uh, Asian management, uh, operations management, Guangxi, uh, things like that. So we'll try to put it, your papers together and publish a book for you. The book that we're going to be using. Last class we talked about it, uh, marketing management. Make sure you understand it should be a framework for marketing management. The international edition, it's the very small, brief, concise, easy to read 
uh, and easy to buy. It's very, very inexpensive for the international edition. Don't buy the American edition. It's like five times more expensive. Um, international edition is, is good to use. I'm going to be using the textbook and I will also use cases and uh, different business examples and MOOC examples. Maybe somebody in Ireland made a video you can show in class related to this or paste your information every week uh, for discussion. So we know with our first group project, your research project. Your second group project is for every week. Make a different group of people and review the class topic. And I will be able to give you lots of summaries of this and I can give you lots of information about the tech. So this should be very easy. I can give this information before the class. All of this information is already here if you want it. So what I would like to do is your group number two with new, with new, find something to make it interesting. Find something that's interesting to you. It's smart if you're developing a research project, find an article or find an online video from North America or England or Africa, anywhere. Find a good educational video and then you can summarize that to the class related to this. And you can put the information on Facebook. And so you will be in a group learning this stuff and if you have, for example, a group with 10 students, that means one student only needs to post information and present it one time. And then the other group will do something and the other group will do something. And then your second person in your group will take care of the next week. So you don't need to do too much. Um, hopefully that's clear, the two group projects. Now I'm going to show you I get exactly the framework. This book is interesting, but I will race through it. I'm going to fly through it. A lot of it I find, we're on video, so some of it is very good. <laughs> because we're on video, some other stuff is, is okay, <laughs> if you understand, so we will go through it very fast. If I go through it very fast, you don't need to worry about it for exams and stuff. Don't be afraid if I fly through some of these slides. Let's start. These are things that the book is talking about we need to know. Why is marketing important? What is marketing? The, what are fundamental marketing concepts, etc. Here is a definition related to marketing. And uh, in addition to this uh, definition of marketing, I would like to modify it a little bit. I would like to say marketing is an organizational function and a set of processes for creating, communicating and delivering value with value being key. You have to have value. Don't just try to push things on people. In 2014, you can no longer easily push things on your customers. But it's for customers and for managing customer relationships in a way that benefit the organization and its stakeholders. What I will add is it's based on research, research, research. You must know the other person very well. If you don't know the other person very well, you can't supply them with what they need. And because of management with information online, if you want to buy a car, how do you decide what to buy? You will go on the internet, you will ask your friends what they bought, you will ask your parents or other people what they bought, you will check Facebook, you will check Kakao, and you will decide from there. You will probably not listen to companies unless they are in your Facebook groups or if you see your friend is saying I like this then you will consider them so you only know that if the company is using research to find who has their product or who likes their product next it's an art and science <laughs> next you can market anything Next, you can market almost anything. Next, there's some systems for it. Next, there's a whole bunch of different markets for it. You understand this. So obviously you don't need to remember those other slides for the exam. What is important is needs, wants and demands. Number one, make sure you know what the other people need first. And that's managing the information. Some people have the 
uh, four P's that they talk about. In addition to the four P's, which is product, place, price, promotion, um, you also need to understand SWOT analysis. S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. The new term that is being discussed a lot is STP. So that's the segmenting, targeting, and positioning is the new popular thing to focus on. And then you have a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and lots of needs. Make sure you know the needs. Um, and I think we're pretty much finished for the textbook. Let me guess. Let me just check some of my notes. Oh, uh, no, I'm just going to clarify some things. Here, I'm going to clarify this. Of course, you understand, or you should understand this. This is very, very popular for other people to talk about. I don't think it's as important for you to think about, because you must think about everything, but other business people want to know you are an expert in marketing. So they want to know you know the four Ps, the basics of marketing. The four Ps are product, price, Promotion and place, or I call it the uh, product, price, place, and promotion is what I usually say. So make sure you know these. In addition to these, as I said, you need to know strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and not just one of each. Try to know many strengths, many weaknesses of you. Your weakness, your competitor's weakness, the market weakness. For example, my skin color being white in Korea, is that a weakness? And maybe it's also an opportunity for me. What is the opportunity for other people having different skin color? What is the opportunity for other markets? What's the opportunity for your competitors' weaknesses? So many of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Not just one. Biggest mistake many marketing people or MBA people have is they find only one strength, one weakness, one opportunity. That's wrong. Try to think of many of them. And the last, STP. What's STP stand for again? Segmenting, targeting, and positioning. Good. So we can skip this too. And then uh, here's the new four Ps, but you don't really need to know about that. So now we are finished. That's the textbook chapter. Pretty easy, huh? Pretty boring too in some sense. But of course, I'm not going to say anything bad about the textbook. Great textbook. What I will say is there are other things I suggest you guys focus on doing. As I said, every week it's good if you find information online. Best, managing information online. Find somebody else teaching it very well. Like, I have taught this well, you can find me on the YouTube. Or you can find another more handsome professor or smarter professor or some other person that you want to fall in love with teaching it on the internet and then summarize that to the class. Um, those are usually called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. I would be very happy if you can identify videos that are teaching this chapter topic. Or in addition to just videos, you can find these articles. So here's an article from Harvard Business School which I refer to as Harvard BS. Um, and it's basically just saying the same thing we just talked about. What is marketing? I think for the final exam, you'll need to know maybe a definition of marketing. Okay, and we've gone through that. I think you'll also need to know the four Ps. I think you'll also need to know the SWOT, SWOT analysis, what is SWOT? For the final exam, I think you'll also need to know STP. Then you will also need to know the product life cycle which I think they're not talking about in here, but we will talk about later in class. Then you'll need to know the customer chart. Very, very important, special, especially with managing information. You need to know what customers are the best customers to work with. For example, water. You can sell water to everyone in the world, but that's not a good idea. People will waste your time and you will run out of money and you won't be able to continue. You must focus on the best customers. And with the customer chart, you can identify some people are at the beginning of using products, innovators. Then there's the early majority that will adopt the newest phones or the newest technology. 
generally first, after those researchers, those geeks. And then you'll have the late majority of customers. And then you can have some dinosaurs or the laggards that will only adopt new products after everybody else has already taken it. So there's many types of people that will take the products or services. You need to know what those types are. The most important can be either the innovators because they can work for you. If you get those guys, they love the newest technology and they research it, they blog about it. And since they love it, if you just find them through social media analytics and tell them that you would like to have their opinion or have them as a representative or an honorary marketing manager or an ambassador of the company, since they already love it, now you're just giving them a special title that they love anyway, they will probably do it for free. And they can design your product, improve your product, promote your product. Because almost everybody else focuses on what they say. So in the past, marketing spent millions or billions of dollars designing new products. Now you can give that to those innovators and they can help you for free. And then they can market a lot of your product a lot for free. So that's the customer uh, chart. And um, one of the next last things to talk about is the uh, Boston Consulting Group, Boston Consulting Matrix, and that's talking about dogs and cows and crazy things like that. It's describing products or services. Is it a really, really good product or is it a shitty product? Should you just stop working with it? So there's the Boston Consulting Matrix that will identify the type of product. That may be on the exam, probably. And the last thing that's very, very important, well, the main focus for your research projects is the uh, social media analytics, managing the social media stuff. Make sure you know how to use social, anal social media analytics. In Korea, it will be the most important one, Naver is the social media and Naver Analytics will tell you what other people in Korea want, what they need, what they like, where they talk about it, when do they talk about it, who talks about it. If you know who talks about your product the most and where they talk about it and when they talk about it, you can go there and make sure your company is represented. Make sure your product is represented and get them to help you promote it. That is a very good idea. And then, of course, you can have Facebook analytics or Twitter analytics, uh, etc. And where is the biggest market in the world? China. China uses different programs. They would use Weibo, for example. And Weibo analytics is a good thing to know. So now, let's go through what Harvard Ed says. What is marketing? Same thing as what we talked about with the, the, uh, the book, where it went. So there, they should be saying the same thing as what we just discussed here. Um, in general, it talks about it's buying and selling, advertising, stuff like that. Um, I think this definition um, that they have for, for marketing is pretty good. It says the American Marketing Association, their official uh, definition is this, but I will add two points to it. What they say is marketing is the process of researching, researching, researching. Make sure you add that part. Marketing's process of researching, planning, and executing the uh, conception, pricing, promotion, and distribution of ideas, goods, and services to create mutually beneficial exchanges that satisfy individual and organization objectives. So here, plus add researching and add mutually beneficial to this definition. That's the definition that I think you need to know for the final exam. And again, it's promoting the idea of management of information. Um, in addition, it talks about other things. It says sometimes uh, marketing means buying low, selling high. No, that's not it. If you're just focused on that, you will probably lose money and go bankrupt. That is gambling. Um, or marketing is separating customers from loose change. Or it's just getting money from people. That is not what you should be studying. Don't even uh, really consider that. You, if you get an image, market yourself as a crook or as a criminal, pushing people just to take their money, the internet will tell the world that you are that type of crazy person and you will not be able to work for very long. 
Next, let's keep going through this. Um, here, this is talking about what are basically the four P's, product, price, place. Um, and then in addition to that, it goes over to uh, here, it's talking about the same thing. The product, price, place, uh, distribution is also the same thing as place. And then in addition to that, it goes down to this. A big part of this textbook and a big part of marketing is communications. How can you communicate? Mass communication, personal communications, there's uh, uh, product communications, there's all types of communications. Um, internet, social media communications, I believe is the most important part. Um, that is what you know. But the biggest companies, the multi-billion dollar companies, the multi-trillion dollar companies, they don't only use the free social media programs. They will pay to get professional social media analytics programs. But they also have million dollar programs doing the same type of thing, more specifically just for business. Management of information systems. If you know a lot about that, it will definitely help you. Why is there million dollar systems? How can you use that? That's one focus I suggest you look into. Um, if the world's biggest companies stay big and they get big because they have million dollar programs to manage all information and tell you what to do, can the middle person, if you don't have millions of dollars, can you compete with them if they have all the information managed. I think you can using social media analytics. But what about at the middle level or low level? What about people that are going to be um, using social media analytics if they're super poor, if they only have a dollar a day to live on, but they want to start a business? I encourage you to develop a project like that. Can the poor people there's more than two billion people living with less than two dollars a day. If they can be your customers or you can work with them, that's a huge market. Can they compete with the million dollar programs? I think they can. Maybe you can research that. I think they can use social media for free. I think they can use the analytics programs for free. But some people say they're so poor, they can't pay to go to university. Some universities are very expensive. What's your answer for that? Is there a way that they can manage information if they don't have money to pay for university education? MOOCs, yes. They can learn all of this information on the internet for free. And usually every community almost in the world now has at least one local center that provides internet for the kids or the community. So you can go to a church and use their computer or go to the YMCA or go to local centers, libraries, and use the computers there. So even the poorest of the poor people, I think, can start to compete with the richest of the rich people. How much can that impact the world? Is it going to start changing things? But Harvard wasn't talking about that. So I'm going to the, the next part, push, pull. And what else is important? And uh, <laughs> good enough, we're done. Um, so that's the uh, one article that's talking about what is marketing. So it's going to help promote this. Um, of course, since we're on the internet, I'm not going to say Harvard BS is boring, but I will talk about something that is good from Harvard. So here's another article that is more interesting. This, we just talked about marketing. We just took uh, half an hour to talk about marketing. But now some experts are saying marketing is dead. Um, by the way, I hope you remember that so far everything I just talked about, I gave to you guys uh, in the first class, it is on the Facebook site, so you can look at this stuff before class. Um, if you read it, great. Anybody want to comment? Is marketing dead? Do you think marketing is dead? This is proving, or he believes, marketing is dead. What do you think? Is he crazy? Is he drunk? He's American. Maybe he's taking too many drugs. 
Any comments? Is marketing dead? Traditional marketing, to be specific. Any ideas? What does this say if you had a chance to read it? To give you a hint, marketing has been around for hundreds of years. Originally, people were very poor and they didn't have a lot of education. They didn't have universities hundreds of years ago. They didn't have libraries a long time ago. It started in Egypt, Alexandria, and the libraries there. And then it started to become popular in about uh, 1088. We had the first university, 1088 in, in Europe. But if you didn't have a university or a library in your town, how could you learn? Well, the old style was a big company would get the smart people, the rich people, they would learn things. And they go and they just tell you, this is life, this is good. This will make you a god. This is snake oil and you will be amazing. And you believe them. So for a long time, marketing just went and told you this is good. You believe them and you bought it. I think that marketing is dead. It does not exist anymore with most people. Now, most people will not listen to the business person. You will listen only to your friends and the world information systems and you will go get what your friends tell you or what you find is good. You will not listen to salesmen unless the salesmen work with your friends and the social media analytics. So that's what they're talking about. Marketing, the old marketing style of just giving information is dead. Now you must get your marketing in their minds, put it in front of them and work with that that way. So what it's basically saying is, first of all, uh, traditional marketing. And then in addition to traditional marketing, it talks about, first, buyers are no longer paying attention. Next, it says, buyers are checking out products and service information in their own ways. I think this paper is very good, so I may be asking questions about this a lot. Uh, next, it says, second, CEOs for a little while were starting to say, marketers are full of crap. They don't know what they're talking about. They just blah, 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 give me money, and they don't really develop. So that has been a problem because the CEO gives money to marketers, they spend the money, but then the CEO doesn't know where it went, and the CEO doesn't know if it helped at all. That's a problem. Has that changed? Do you think that's changed? Should a CEO still give the marketing department money? Any idea? Is it, uh, anybody want to take a guess? Um, yeah, I believe they still should. I mean, if they want to advertise a product, you can get out their name out there. Okay, so. To a degree. The CEO for many years gave money to make advertising. But the CEO doesn't know, did that help? I give you a million dollars to make a TV show or a TV commercial, but I don't know if we've sold any more. Can you prove we sold any more? You can just prove you put the money on the TV. But maybe the TV manager is your girlfriend. Can you prove it's helped? In the past, you couldn't. It was very hard to prove it was useful. Today, that's the question. Is it different today? How can you prove it today? Yes. yes, you can start studying patterns. Example, social media analytics. You can see how many people give you the thumbs up. How many people take your show and share it with somebody else. So those types of information can be tracked. Um, the next, the third, what they're talking about is with the social media, it's almost the same thing. 
with the uh, increasingly social media infused environment, traditional marketing does not work so well. Now you have to go through, restore the community marketing, get people to talk about your product the most. You'll probably get your, where's it here? Um, get your neighbors and your friends to uh, your peer network to start talking about your product. Once your peers or innovators are talking about it, that will promote it a lot. Next, you need to find your customer influencers. As I talked about, there is a, a, a graph of your customers. Some people at the very, very beginning are geeks, for example, and they learn about the product at the beginning. Find out what they like and what they suggest, work with them, and everybody else follows what they say. So find those innovators, work with them. And the same thing at the bottom, um, make those customer advocates in your business. Get them to be your ambassadors for your product or your, uh, your main managers, your volunteer managers, your honorary marketing manager, for example. Many times they'll do it for free. So that's the idea of uh, marketing is dead. Um, next, we've talked about uh, we've talked about MOOCs. I can show you if you would like quickly online. Um, what is the name of an online source where you can get information? Where can you find some videos about the products? YouTube. YouTube. Good. What is another one? Khan Academy. Khan Academy. Good. Make sure you're aware of Khan Academy. This is so important for learning and developing now. And it's important because this online program will give their technology for free, like the computer software. How do they make their videos? How can they give the trainers the video programs? They give this away for free. So because of this, I suggest we use this as a case study for one of the weeks. So you, sh you might want to look into this. We have case studies of this, and there's examples about this. What is another MOOC? Here's one. What's another one? Any ideas? Coursera, yes. Uh, oops, I'm spelling it wrong. I think some of these, uh, these seem to be very uh, popular in the news. A lot of people talk about them, but I think these seem to be better in my opinion. Allison is uh, from Ireland and they have things developed very, very easily to find out where these topics are. Like YouTube, you don't easily know which videos are there. You just have to try and search. Unless you're an expert, then you know how to find and uh, sort the tags. Um, Allison sort all of these videos for you and they can organize them very easily. Same with the National Program for Technology Enhanced Learning. So if you find information about those, that will also be very useful for you. Um, why I'm talking about that? There are lots of things that we can study. The textbook, if I just talk about the textbook, you guys start to fall asleep. I want to make this very interesting. So. You can look at other SSCI articles, which is perfect information, and usually it's very good information. Uh, Harvard is ranked around zero to one, but some of the good articles are, really good articles, are ranked from five to 11. The maximum score you can get is about 30. So supporting the textbook with this article would be very educational, but it might be a little boring. Supporting the textbook with this type of information should be a lot more interesting. But in addition to that, looking at the real world, looking at real business is important. So I suggest um, we start looking, I'm gonna try to 
finish. Each week, it would be a good idea if we also look at cases, case studies. How did a company do their marketing? First of all, I will introduce the Obama marketing case. Everybody knows the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Black guy, first black President of the United States. Several years ago, 2006, 2007, most people had no idea who he was. He was not super rich. He was not super famous. He did not have the great ability by himself to become the president. Who was his competition? His competition was Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Almost everybody knew about them, right? So since everybody knew about them, she had a much easier time and most people thought she was going to win. So how did this no-name guy beat her? And this talks about that. She worked with the old style. She worked with the rich, powerful style. She worked with the system where everybody could donate more than $2,000. And she would only accept, if you want to help me, okay, only if you give me more than $2,000. If you only have a little bit of money, don't waste my time. Obama was the opposite. Obama started to open his programming, his, his planning, to social media, to Facebook. He made a website like uh, BarackObama.com linked with Twitter, linked with Facebook, linked with MySpace. And he allowed everybody to promote him. And he allowed everybody to donate anything you want. So Barack Obama, he took almost less than $200 from anybody. And so what was the difference? Hillary took $2,000 each. Barack Obama, he took less than $200 each on average. So who won? It started, Clinton had uh, something like $50 million basically in her bank account to start promoting herself. Barack Obama didn't have very much at all. Facebook was free though, and he got people interested in him to start promoting it. Um, in uh, the first pre-year 2007, he ended up raising from free $25 million. So in 2007, 25 million. And then in uh, February the next year, that was another 122 million. Then in June, he got another 55 million. July, he got another 51 million. Uh, August, he got another 66 million dollars. September, he got another 150 million. Altogether, he basically got $778 million just from talking to the regular guy, just from talking to everybody, just by listening to what they want and giving them what they want to hear, going through MySpace and Facebook all the time. Another reason why this says he won is because if he took like $194 each and Hillary took $2,000 each, and this is the limit. By law, you should not give more than that. There are ways around it, but by law, you're not supposed to give more than this. So if she got one person to give money at the beginning, that's great. But after that, this person could not give any more money. You can't help me anymore. But this guy, if you give me money here, one month later, you can give me more money. One month later, you can give me more money and more money so they can keep helping you grow. That's one of the reasons why he won. So make sure you're aware, social media and the analytics, that's what made the president. So here's one case study. It's a little bit more interesting than the other examples I talked about. Next time we meet, I will be giving you a quiz about how Google is important. And here are some of your quiz questions. As soon as I finish giving you quiz questions, then you can leave. Um, you don't have to do the quiz now. I'm telling you what I will ask you 
in two weeks? These are some of the questions. Um, it's related to Google, and I will say, who was the first search engine in North America? It was not Google. So who was the first search engine? How was the first search engine searching and organizing information? What was the problem with that first system? Um, what key development made Google successful? What made Google famous? What is Google's mission statement? I'll ask you questions like that. When was Google started? I'll ask you questions like that. I'll also ask you questions like, how does Google make money? And what products or services? How many products and services does Google have? And you should know at least two of those questions. For example, Google has more than 150 products and services. They have Google Glass, where there's cameras on it, and, it, and you walk around, and your computer's in front of you. It says your face, it recognizes it, you are this person, so I can remember who you are. And she thinks I'm a genius because I know everything about her because of Google Glass. They also have Google Lens, a contact lens that can control your body style and analyze your body style. And they have Google Watch. It's a new watch that can control and record all information about you, and it's the computer. And they have Google Flights now. If you want to travel for Chuseok, Google Flights will tell you the best price of everything on the internet right now. That's what they will tell you, but what's the problem with that? What's the problem with Google? It's the Western system. It doesn't usually work in Korea. In Korea, Naver is more powerful. So if you go to North America, Google Flights is very, very good if you want to get a flight back home. But in Korea or in China, other programs might be better. Next, the most important thing is you need to know about Google Analytics. Make sure you know about those stuff. So for next week, read about Google and don't forget there's not just the American case, there's also another case, Google in China. So try to review both of them and be prepared to talk about them. Whoever can find some of this information, post it in Facebook first, they can get the bonus points for, for managing the next week's talk.